Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome to the office. We are live from the office today. I am doing some 3D modeling. I'm working on this. Oop, working on this. Woo, drop the trigger. <laughs> I've got the Boolean Gemini scout rifle from Destiny. I built a bunch of the parts. And uh, I'll be working on more videos for this. But today, I'm live streaming over on Twitch. And I'm going to show you guys some of the 3D modeling I've been doing in Fusion 360. So, here are some of the parts already. Some more down here. And we're going to model more parts, get them ready for the printer, which is going right now. Doing a little little surprise thing there. And uh, hopefully you guys will learn a little bit about drawing in CAD and making 3D models for printing. So, follow along. This one's going to be a good, good informative one. So this, this part on the front of the gun here, just above the pieces I, I just printed, that's what I'm going to model next. Uh, and this is just a reference image captured from the game, and along with my low poly reference images that I have, um, that, will, uh, that will help me figure out how this whole thing is supposed to go together. Great. Cool. Also, it's going to nestle down into this groove. Let's turn off the canvas. This groove here is going to house the uh, the part. So that's where it's going to nestle. So I need to figure that out too. So I'll model it down to that uh, flat flat with these two surfaces. Alright, so let's start by... Let's start by making a sketch. Yes. Actually, let's do this part first. Let's do this part first. This will be this will be fun. Let's start by doing a very simple operation. This is the this barrel thing. That's part of the barrel. I don't know. I'm going to sketch that and we'll do a, re a revolve. So let's hit sketch and it wants to know what surface to sketch on. Uh, and I could click on any of these surfaces, but I'm going to click on just this plane. And I'm going to start by drawing a, uh, a midline for this, which is roughly there. And I'm going to hit the little check mark and then hit escape and move that out. And I'm going to turn this into a construction line. It's just a dotted yellow line. And that's the midline for my part. Uh, and then I'll draw the rest of this thing. So I'm just going to, again, grab the line tool for sketching. I'll start there. And this is not uh, this is not a complicated part. Um, and it also, it looks like it ends right here, but it actually goes up. I'm going to say at like a 45 degree angle. Er, math. Uh, 45 plus 95, 135. There it goes. Um, and I will frequently, whoop, if I have a specific line like that, I'll draw it and then uh, trim it later. So I can even draw another line starting there and go across uh, to there and then down. Whoop, down to my midline. Awesome. So let's draw, let's see here, draw an, another line here, and that would be for 45 or 135, like that, and then I'm going to draw a line about where I think it should go there, and I'm not making medical devices here, I'm kind of eyeballing a lot of this, and then uh, I'm going to trim, trim off all the extra bits. And it's yelling at me because of stuff. And I don't really understand all of that yet. I'm still kind of learning about uh, fusion. But uh, I'm getting there. Now, this this part here I want to replicate over there. And I should be able to go to create. No, I'm sorry. Sketch rectangular pattern. Drag it that way. Do one or two. Nope. Sorry. Try again. <laughs> That, 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 do two of them. There we go. That's what I want. And then I just drag this out to where it ought to go. About there. And hit enter. Okay. 
and then I trim out this bottom piece here. So hit T for trim and trim that out. Cool. We've successfully drawn one line. I'm going to make a line closing this whole piece off like that. Okay, cool. So we've made a sketch and because it's orange, that means it's all contained. Uh, it's all, all, uh, it's closed or whatever. There's a term for it, I'm sure. I'm going to hit stop sketch. I'm going to make this sketch into a body. So I click on that, go to create revolve profile. That's the one that's selected. Whoops. There we go. Axis, select that midline and it revolves it for us and it looks really cool. Uh, 360 degrees all the way around. We're going to hit OK. That looks great. And if I hide my canvas, you can see we've made a part. I'm very excited about that. All right, let's let's do another couple of things here. Another couple of operations. Turn our canvas back on. Go back to the right view. Punch a hole through this thing. A couple of holes through this thing. So let's see here. We need a sort of a circular looking thing and sort of a square looking thing. Squares are easy. Let's create a box. And again, I'm going to click on the uh, the side view and uh, create a box like that. And then uh, if I drag it out, you can see it automatically wants to cut out whatever it's attached to. If I hide my canvas, you'll see it's getting there. Um, but I want to I wanna punch through both sides. So I'm going to, instead of do uh, cut, I'm going to say new body. Make this longer and hit OK. And then I can go to my bodies list and grab that. Right click on mo and move on it. And then drag it through until it's breached both sides. I'll hit OK. Then I'll go to Modify, Combine our lower barrel thing with the new thing that I made. And now I change the operation to Cut. You can see it's going to cut a hole. And I hit OK. And hooray! It made a hole, which is really cool. I think there's like another cut taken out from the top. So um, let's do a sketch. In the top view. Oh, thanks for thanks for that. Let's go back to where I wanted to actually work on the part. Cool. So if I draw a line here and make it, uh, let's say two millimeters in. Do that again over here. Two millimeters in like that. Stop the sketch. Now. Now I can the camera can go crazy on me. There we go. These are the two uh, profiles I just made. If I extrude them straight up, it'll cut out a hole. Oh, that looks cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Neat. Um. Oh, I screwed up. Something happened. Something happened right there. I missed part. I don't know how I did that. I'm going to just edit this sketch like so. Um, oh, I see what happened. I punched that line in a little bit. Uh, why can't I move that? Will this work if I just trim it? Let's find out. So I'm just updating that sketch. And hopefully it fixes the problem. It did. So even after I've done the extrusion, if I update that sketch, it will update with the way the model looks, which is one of my favorite things about working with the parametric workflow. Let's see, let's let's name this lower barrel. Cool. You guys ready for this? Alright. Came right off the prick bed. I love PLA. It is Brittany! Ta-da! It's the one and only Lady Longshanks with a bunch of support material on her, but the print came out pretty awesome. Look at that. Cool, when we were in, uh, let's see if it'll focus. 
when we were in Portland, the Shapeify Me booth scanned us and we bought the files and I printed Brittany out. Uh, and I've got, where's me? I got me. A little bit taller than me. Ta-da! <laughs> Let me uh, just pull the support material off of Brit here real quick. There goes that. Got, she's got all her fingers. This thumb looks a little jacked up. We can fix that. Uh, liberating her head. Got it. It's got a ponytail. I'm really impressed with the detail that this thing picked up. It got all the wrinkles and stuff in her shirt. So there's some support material in the wrinkle there. That's one of the reasons why I love Simplify 3D. The, the support material is so easy to, to remove. There's Brittany. Hooray! There we go, and then there's me. At the appropriate height. <laughs> Focus, there we go. That's really cool. And what's important is we have the 3D models of these so we can um, like model parts in that and then 3D print them and then they'll fit on us, which is great. So, there you go. Hey, you two. Uh, awesome! I'm pretty stoked. Alright, let me finish up this 3D model here. Let's punch another hole in this thing. Um, turn on our canvas. Let's turn... That sketch on. I'll use the same center line, but I will draw a new sketch. Uh, sketch... Center to center slot. There we go. I like that better. There's our slot. Stop sketch. <laughs> Piece of cake. Now this one, we can do a symmetrical... Um, it's hiding in there. Uh, and I can't quite get that to that, so I will hide the bodies and I can select that. Right click, go to extrude. This is where I can set the direction to symmetric, and it will go in both, if I turn on the bodies, you can see, it will go in both directions, like so, which is pretty great, versus um, one side, two sides, I can choose two different directions, or I can go to symmetric, which is both, I hit OK, and it punches a hole right through, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, let's, let's put a hole through this thing the barrel thingy I imagine there's a hole I can just create a cylinder and if I click on the face of this uh, it'll let me just put something right in the center and I'm just gonna guess on the diameter of this uh, it's not really mission critical <laughs> that this be a particular diameter oh my goodness I want 12 meters not 1200 meters or centimeters uh, 12, yeah. And and even though I'm creating something, if I drag it through, you can see that it, uh, it is uh, cutting a hole, which is great. Uh, I can even say, um, I wonder if I can get it to go right to that line. I don't know. It's about 50. Negative 50. 49. 0.5 there we go perfect I don't need this to go this is a faux barrel I don't need it to actually go all the way through the thing the last thing I want to do is pretty it up using some chamfers so if we go to create or modify modify chamfer and click on an edge click on another edge if I drag this it'll add a really nice looking chamfer and I can even say like a one millimeter chamfer which actually looks pretty good hit enter and there we go um, that's a pretty great looking part. I think maybe this this part right here would look good with the chamfer. Let's go chamfer crazy. I can select them by holding down shift and hit chamfer again. And uh, maybe maybe 0.5, maybe a small, slightly smaller chamfer. There we go. Maybe these parts need that too. Let's see how they look. This is an easy way to make things look super professional, like... Ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Just sort of softening a bunch of the edges. There we go. 
So that is, uh, oh, I can, I can close that. I don't need that up there. Give myself a little more screen real estate. Uh, that's a really simple piece right there. And that, I think, is ready. Like, I could go and print that. You just go up to click Make, 3D Print, and then click on your part. That gives you some options. I'm not going to send this to a 3D Print utility. I'm just going to make the refinement high and hit OK. And it'll say, hey, where do you want that to go? And I've got a folder for my Boolean Gemini prints. And I'm going to go say Lower Barrel, and I'm going to hit Save. So I've saved the file, it, and it pops out an STL file. Go to Simplify 3D, and then we go get that file. So uh, I just hit Import, and I go find my files, and I find Lower Barrel, and there it is. Ta-da! And that's even, I think, I, I want to print it in that orientation. That seems like it makes sense to print it that way. Um, but I've got some settings. Basically, I've got Fusion 360... Which one is these? Simplify 3D. <laughs> okay, Simplify 3D open. I have a profile for the Ultimaker 2 Extended Plus, which is the printer I'm using. I've set it to PLA. I set the auto configuration thing to high quality. I'm gonna go with uh, maybe like a 15% infill. I've included a raft. I've included support. Um, the I don't really know too much about changing settings. So I just kind of go to like high quality and I hit okay. And uh, I don't have to reorient this or anything. I can hit prepare to print. And it should show me what it's going to look like. It's going to take three hours, 42 minutes. Um, I always print with a raft because uh, it's just more likely it'll succeed. <laughs> and there's the thing. And we can, whoops, we can zip through the print like so. And it will show basically how it's going to print. But that seems pretty reasonable to me. Starting with the raft, bloop, and then printing all the parts all the way up. And there we go. So all I have to do now is uh, save this G-code file out to a memory card, dump it into my Ultimaker, and it'll be ready to print. Uh, yeah, I was worried the bot, the base of that would break free. All right. No. And there you go. Uh, like I said, all of this was done live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash punished props. We do that every Tuesday at noon pacific you can catch us building stuff in the shop or doing things like this in the office here uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this look into 3d modeling again if go grab fusion 360 give it a try check out their tutorials to get you started and uh just try it out even if you don't have a 3d printer model something you can send it to someone else and have them print it other than that of course subscribe to the youtube channel we have more and more stuff going up every week we have four videos out right now for the boolean gemini you can go check those out and see how the build is progressing and we'll have more coming out in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for that thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next live stream